welcome back to Meet the Museum. I'm Carol Ross, a docent with the Rabbi Ronald and Judy Shapiro Museum of Judaica at Congregation Shalom. In our previous episode in the Ostak Foyer Saperstein Gallery, we shared the stories of some secular items saved and displayed in our Safe Havens case. This is the area of our museum dedicated to Jewish strength and survival during and after the Holocaust. Today, let's learn the amazing rescue and survival story of a sacred item on display in this same case, a Torah scroll written at the beginning of the 19th century in Czechoslovakia and used in worship at the Pincus Synagogue in Prague until World War II. We all know that a Torah is so sacred to Jews that it is called our tree of life. Torah contains the laws and history of the Jewish people. The story of how this sacred Torah survived the war and came to Congregation Shalom is a drama consisting of five acts of rescue and involving different settings and many actors. Act one, the first setting is Bohemia and Moravia areas in Czechoslovakia where Jews had lived for 1,000 years and had developed a rich Jewish culture with hundreds of synagogues. In 1938 and 39, the Nazis invaded Bohemia and Moravia, destroyed 50 synagogues, and by 1943 had deported 81,000 Jews to Terezin and other concentration camps. Now our rescue drama begins in Prague, the capital city in this setting, as you can see on the map, in the central area of Bohemia. Perhaps you have heard about a Nazi plan for a museum of the extinct Jewish, Jewish race in Prague and about Nazis collecting any scrolls that they had not already destroyed to display after Hitler had rid Europe of the Jews. The truth to that museum story is questionable. Since a Jewish museum had existed in Prague since 1906, and in 1942, the Jewish community and museum leaders themselves were the important actors, the impetus for the rescue. They persuaded the, Jew the Nazis to bring abandoned Torah scrolls, an amazing to total of 1,564 from the deserted communities and synagogues to the relative safety of their Jewish museum in Prague to be cataloged and stored there. Now, act one of our rescue story takes a sad turn. All these actors, the curators and staff of the Jewish museum in Prague, who had worked so hard to preserve Judaism by collecting these Torah scrolls, were sent to Terezin and Auschwitz to almost certain death. Only one curator survived the Holocaust. Her name was Hanna Volovkova. In 1948, our story takes another frightening turn. Communists took over the government of Czechoslovakia and put the Jewish Museum in Prague under communist state control. They sent the entire group of 1,564 collected Torahs from the museum to a single abandoned Prague synagogue for storage. Terrible conditions existed in this makeshift warehouse. Damp, cramped quarters with one Torah stacked on top of another on top of another. The Torahs were decaying and were surely doomed. Act two, the second rescue, the Czech communists desperately needed money to run their government and sought to sell the entire lot of damaged Torahs. So enter a new actor, a British Jewish philanthropist by the name of Ralph C. Yablon, paid 30,000 English pounds in 1963 to purchase the 1,564 scrolls and send them to his synagogue, the Westminster Synagogue in London. Act three, the rehabilitation in London of the damaged scrolls. These Torahs had been moldering for over 20 years. A team of scribes began to check each scroll and catalog them. Ruth Schaefer oversaw the care of these Torahs and continued in that capacity for 40 years. There are poignant rehabilitation stories that exist 
For example, when the Torahs were examined, notes were found inside some, pleading, save us. The Torahs were divided into groups, those able to be used in worship services once restored to those beyond help, which would only be used as Holocaust memorial displays. In Act 4, another important actor in this drama appears on stage, David Brand, a Hasidic Jew from Jerusalem. In 1965, he just happened to knock on the London Westminster Synagogue door with this question. Could they use the services of himself, a scribe? His arrival was pure coincidence. He had no idea about the recent purchase and rescue of 1,564 scrolls. Eventually, David Brand spent 27 years at the Westminster Synagogue working on the restoration of these Torahs. Act 5, the, the Memorial Scrolls Trust. Rescue, rescuer Ralph Yablon had made the Westminster Synagogue the trustee for these scrolls, tasked with distributing the restored scrolls around the world. The scrolls were never sold or even donated, but sent out on permanent loan. Congregation Shalom acquired our scroll when the family of James L. Gold contributed to the cost of repair and shipment in memory of their husband and father. Rabbi Shapiro negotiated the loan with the Westminster Memorial Scrolls Trust. So what kind of condition is our Chuck, Chuck Torah? When you view it in the display case, you can see damage on the parchment. It is considered pasul, the Hebrew word meaning unfit for Jewish ceremonial use according to rabbinic law. Therefore, we don't read from it during services, but we do take it out of the case for various reasons. Our congregation has the responsibility of taking care of this Torah, which includes turning it on, turning it on a regular basis so the parchment doesn't fade. During the High Holy Days, this Torah is often held by a member of the Gold family, and the rabbis at Shalom use it when giving talks to groups about the Holocaust. Here's a picture of Rabbi Shapiro talking to second graders a few years back about our special Torah. Notice, too, the beautiful finials, yad, and breastplate on display in the case. These come from Israel and were also donated by the Gold family. In addition to this amazing five-act drama about the rescue of our Czech Torah, I have another fascinating Torah rescue story to share with you today. We don't have as many details about this Polish Torah acquired by Congregation Shalom and housed inside the Ark in our Samson Sanctuary. But here's what we do know. During the Holocaust, a Polish man, whose name is unknown to us, hid it in his small shtetl town from the Nazis. This man survived the concentration camps, returned to his hometown in Poland and found the scroll. The Torah was then used by the Warsaw Jewish community after the war, particularly by children, since it is lighter than other Torahs until the numbers of members with children dwindled there to just a few. It was then sent to New York to be sold, specifically to be used by children. Shalom members Bob and Harriet Gordon and their family donated money for the purchase of this Torah in memory of Bob's parents. Rabbi Shapiro traveled to New York to examine the Torah and found it in excellent condition, purchased it, and brought it back to our synagogue. It is considered kosher and is used often during B'nai Mitzvah ceremonies here at Shalom. The Gordon family has the honor of holding this Torah on Yom Kippur each year, and our entire congregation benefits from its beauty and history. Thank you for listening to these two amazing stories of rescue today. Please return next month for another episode of Meet the Museum. Until then, Lahitraot. Thank you.